Turbulent times for the aviation industry under the cloud of COVID-19. Bankruptcies, closures and massive layoffs with more on the way. The International Air Transport Association says airlines around the world will need billions of dollars more in bailouts to stay alive, with passenger traffic likely to return to pre-pandemic levels only in 2024. With many years of pain ahead for an industry already on the brink, airlines and their staff are charting new paths to weather the storm. And as the pandemic stretches on, people hungry for their flying fix are jumping at any chance to get a taste of it once more. In this episode of CNA Correspondent, we take you around a world without international travel. Recreating the in-flight experience to satisfy the cravings of avid travellers grounded by the ongoing pandemic. That's what Singapore Airlines aims to do by transforming two of its parked A380 jets into restaurants for a limited time only. For about 30 US dollars, you get a meal in economy class. Dining in a private suite on a spread that includes caviar could set you back by about 450 US dollars. Travel bugs starved of their flying fix pounced on the opportunity. More than 900 seats were snapped up within half an hour of the launch, prompting SIA to open up additional slots. I mean, I'm most interested to get on board as I miss my travels, I miss uh, being on the plane. So this is a good chance for me. Lah. So uh, when they announced the opening, uh, the date for booking, right, I actually came, came through the computer from 12 midnight actually, yeah. So on the 12th of October, so from, from once the, 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 the clock hits 12 midnight, oh, I quickly made my booking and oh, thank God it went through. For those who've missed out, there's still the option of having that first class dining experience delivered right to your doorstep. Customers can pick from first and business class menus for two, complete with wine, amenity kits and even matching tableware used on board. There's even a specially curated playlist to listen to while having your meal. The meal also comes with guides on heating and plating the dishes, or you can book a private chef to do the dirty work instead. A taste of the high life, however, comes with a hefty price tag. The most premium package comes in at close to $1,000. For aviation geek Aaron Wong, who runs a website that dishes out tips on scoring travel rewards, the experience was an entertaining novelty. Um, this is clearly not the thing that someone does week in, week out. Uh, it's for people who have always been curious about how the airline meal comes together, want to try doing it themselves, right? And having that in my own house, the exact um, trays that they use, the, the exact uh, um, containers, uh, being able to play around with that, plate it myself, it was a pretty fun experience. As the pandemic drags on, SIA has launched a fleet of new initiatives to engage customers, including a behind-the-scenes tour of its training facility in November. It was mulling launching flights to nowhere, but scrapped those plans following a review. And with travel restrictions here to stay for a while longer, the airline will have to look at what more it can do on solid ground. Analysts say SIA will have to get creative to weather the COVID-19 storm. As a brand, Singapore Airlines need to continually engage their target audience. And uh, if there's inactivity for some time, uh, there may be a, a sense of a lack of affinity. And, uh, and this initiative is, I think, more so for uh, uh, giving the, uh, their, their fans and, and their loyal customers the opportunity to engage with them, to experience the brand again, uh, despite that you know, they, they can't fly. Having that experience would be good for brand building and uh, as when the uh, skies open up again, uh, people will want to be uh, flying with SIA. But these innovative ideas, along with cost-cutting measures, may not be enough for Singapore's national carrier to stay afloat, say analysts, especially as it recorded a one billion Singapore dollar net loss in July due to passenger carriage plunging by 99% compared to last year. And so, a transformation exercise may be necessary to steer the airline through these turbulent times. 
The comforting smell of fried dough stick wafts across this yard in Bangkok. These fritters, which locals call patongko, have been a hot commodity in recent weeks. So popular that people come by the droves as early as four in the morning in hopes of snagging a bag of them. Like this man, who waited more than four hours for his queue number to be called. But these deep-fried goodies are not the offerings of a well-known restaurant. They are the latest venture of Thailand's national airline. Thai Airways' foray into street snacks has gone down well. It sells a set of three fritters with accompanying dips for about $1.50, breaking in about $12,000 a day from these sales. And that's just one of the ways it's thinking outside of the box to survive. It wasn't too long ago, but there was a time where we'd go anywhere in this world until the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And even though Thailand has been very successful at containing the spread of the coronavirus, it came at the cost of its tourism industry. Almost all flights were grounded, and that has hit its Thai national carrier, Thai Airways, pretty hard. So it has to find new ways to keep afloat. The airline has opened a dining spot at its headquarters in Bangkok, bringing its in-flight dining experience down to earth. There's a food court area where diners can pick from a selection of dishes offered or bought, such as Hainanese chicken rice and Italian pasta. And if you book a special set menu, you'll get the full works, a meal while seated in an actual plane seat with table service by flight attendants. The prices of these limited sets range from $20 for the economy experience to $60 for those looking to treat themselves to a taste of first class. Pierre Andre Hoss is the airline's executive catering chef. Before the pandemic, he and his team worked deep behind the scenes, cooking 90,000 meals a day for flights bound for all corners of the globe. When we talk about food and recipes, it's not different, but uh, the concept changed a lot. And it's a great opportunity for us to progress, to in, uh, evolve. Everything is moving in life, and we don't just keep doing the same thing for all our life. Huh? This is a good thing because we can come out from the kitchen. We used to be in the back and nobody see us. Now we are in the phone, we can talk with the guests, we can explain why the food is like this, why we choose this kind of menu. It's a nice opportunity for us to improve. Sitting here in one of these coveted plain seats as a flight attendant takes your order, you certainly have a lot more leg room now than you would on board and there's plenty to choose from. My pick today is the delicious and spicy Indian fish curry with naan bread, served in dishware you would normally see in business class. Now the service is as good as it is in the air, but for Thai Airways, of course, this is just a temporary measure as the airline still faces a lot of trouble and a long road of recovery ahead. The cash-strapped airline's years of financial struggle came to a head this year as the pandemic crippled the global travel industry. In May, the airline asked the bankruptcy court to approve its restructuring plan, which will mark the biggest turning point in its 60-year history. It's bound for a massive overhaul as it has over 10.5 billion U.S. dollars in liabilities. With Thailand's borders still closed and tourists staying away, a key pillar of the country's economy remains grounded. That leaves Thai Airways staff with little to do. Captain Chaturayot King Pakon, whose last flight was in March, now has a new role to play. When they launched this project, right, and then they like asked some, some pilots to join. And, and so many like, like, uh, people who come and, and dine in here, they're like, hey, can we take photo with captain? Can we take photo with pilots? And then most of them ask, uh, are you really a pilot? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we say yes, right? And then that this kind of the feedback was, was very nice. So the, the, the TG, the, you know, the people who work for this, this um, project say, hey, we should have pilots uh, uh, come and join every day. The airline's ideas have taken off, and it's clear that locals are as hungry for a taste of flying as tourists are to return to Thailand. But Thai Airways being forced to branch out and seek fresh sources of income also shows that the airline, the face of the country's hospitality and tourism sector, is facing a recovery that is far from smooth as silk.
It's time for a getaway on First Airlines. Seat belts on, cabin attendants rattling off safety instructions. A familiar pre-departure experience that's become a rarity for many since COVID-19 struck. And now we're ready for takeoff. I've just left Tokyo and I'm flying above and headed to another country. Wow, it's the first trip I'm experiencing in a month. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard First Airlines flight on the Chakugo International Airport. Our flight time is two hours and five minutes. Not quite. The entire trip actually lasts two hours and takes place inside this building in Ikebukuro in Tokyo. First Airlines, that's a flight simulation company and it's become a huge hit after the pandemic put a stop to international travel. In the age of COVID-19, people are doing whatever it takes for a taste of flying abroad. For slightly over 60 US dollars, you get a seat in first class and a lavish in-flight meal inspired by your destination. Marinated salmon and salad, a seasonal chestnut soup, duck and foie gras, and a Basque-style cheesecake for dessert. The pilot of the flight is actually the founder of First Airlines. On a first airline's flight, there's no need for PCR testing or a lengthy quarantine upon arrival. You can hit the streets right away thanks to a pair of high-tech goggles. On this trip, you transport it to Paris, enjoying its famous site and going on a virtual reality tour of the Louvre Museum. <laughs> Demand for seats on First Airlines has gone up in recent months. They're offering more tours on weekdays from November and wants to increase staff from the current 25. And with a growing appetite for virtual travel amid the pandemic, Mr. Abe has ambitious plans to ramp things up. It will be a while more before Japanese tourists can head abroad for leisure. So far, only green lane arrangements with a few countries for business travelers and long-term residents are in place. Japan Airlines says its international passenger numbers in August were down 96.9% from the same month last year, so it's expanding its horizons. And it's now looking at the business of drone delivery with the aim of transporting goods to and from remote areas around the country. The company is in the midst of training staff to operate these drones. Japan Airlines has been helping employees find new opportunities to tide themselves through these turbulent times. Some of its staff now work on projects to boost the tourism prospects of different parts of the country. And airlines in Japan have also jumped on board the flight to nowhere trend. All Nippon Airways has operated sightseeing flights on its Hawaiian-themed aircraft, which flew the Narita-Honolulu route before the pandemic hit. Now the plane takes off from Narita Airport near Tokyo, only to land back there 90 minutes later after a whirl in the sky. But on board, the Hawaiian spirit is alive and well, from outfits to entertainment to specialty drinks. This is what travel looks like now. And until the pandemic blows over, airlines and travel junkies will have to continue to fake it till they make it. It started off as a side business, but now it's set to soar to even greater heights. And it's become an unexpected lifeline for a struggling airline. 
This is Santan, a restaurant started by low-cost carrier AirAsia in December 2019. But the eatery's popularity skyrocketed this year after Malaysia first went into lockdown in March to curb the spread of COVID-19. Santan was open after repeated requests from AirAsia passengers looking to buy in-flight food in bulk. 30% of the dishes on its menu are Southeast Asian meals served on board, including its beloved Bak Nasir Nasi Lama, named after its recipe owner. Now, a trip to Santan may well be the closest many will get to reliving part of the AirAsia flight experience. Coming into the restaurants or even all the delivery of uh, Panas and Nasi Lama kind of like uh, give them, you know, back the memories that, you know, they were used to, they used to traveling with us. We've all had Asia food, so the meals are decent, so coming here also because it's the price point is quite friendly for us. Now, AirAsia's restaurant business is booming and it's one of the few bright spots for the airline that's going through its roughest patch yet as COVID-19 sends travel demand plummeting. Chief Executive Tony Fernandez says AirAsia plans to shrink its fleet by returning as many leased planes as it can. So the group is getting creative and exploring new revenue streams, including getting in on the e-commerce game. AirAsia recently launched an app that can be used for everything from online payments to booking entertainment options. Now, AirAsia has grand plans for Santan. Catherine says 20 more new outlets will be opened in the Klang Valley over the next two to three months. And next year, it plans to expand to other countries like China and Japan. Ooh, curry-flavored milk chocolate. Anyone? Catherine says Santan aims to open 100 franchise stores by early year 2022. Its contribution to the group's earnings by then is expected to go up to about 10 to 15 percent. We are not just an airline anymore, we are beyond that. It's a whole new world for the aviation industry. And just as airlines are reinventing themselves, staff are seizing new opportunities as well. Stuart Wesley Anna Juntan used to lead a busy jet setting life. Then COVID 19 struck, bringing travel to a standstill. Stuck at home during lockdown, Wesley dug deep into its roots and ended up a social media sensation. The 30 year old, who comes from the Borneo state of Sarawak, has always had a fascination with the eclectic costumes worn by different ethnic groups in Sabah and Sarawak. I was gasping, looking for other ideas. What, can, what more can I do? It, because it's, uh, during MCO, I have nothing to do. We don't have flights. I'm, I'm not going to work. So we just stay at home all the time. So that's when the idea strikes. It gives me, uh, okay, but why don't I make it um, making a um, Borneo doll? These Barbie dolls are given a bonio makeover. It's a labor of love for Wesley, who spends up to three days on each door. The dolls went viral on social media and caught the attention of Malaysia Tourism Minister Nancy Shukri. She's commissioned Wesley to produce a series of dolls for her ministry. And Wesley has also been flooded with orders from customers looking for a keepsake that truly represents Malaysia's unique cultural heritage. Wesley flies for flight carrier Malaysia Airlines, a symbol of national pride. Now, it's in dire straits now and Wesley wants to see the airline pulled through. In the meantime, he will continue to showcase his pride in Malaysia's culture in his own way and hopes that his bonio doors will earn a special place in the hearts of Malaysians too. around the world have been hemorrhaging jobs as they prepare for a future with emptier skies. In the UK, thousands of staff have come to terms with the grim reality that their careers in the aviation industry have been grounded for good. So they've turned to unfamiliar sectors, making use of the skills that they picked up on board. Here we go, all this. 
For over two decades, former flight service manager Rebecca Palmer served people meals 35,000 feet in the air. Now she's swapped the skies for solid ground, feeding the elderly and vulnerable like 89-year-old Olive as part of her entirely new career as a carer. It makes you feel good that you've, you've been able to help and look after somebody and make their day. I think it's just something that is inbred. It's, you're born with just to have that caring nature. And so to be able to transfer that over onto another job um, is, is fantastic. But Rebecca admits this was something she never imagined she'd be doing at the start of the year. I never thought in a million years that I'd ever leave flying because it was 25 years of my life. and. It still is part of me and I find that I still talk about it a lot. I miss my friends, I miss the destinations, I miss the glamorous side of travel, the glamorous side of flying, but things change and Covid has really, has really changed, really changed it. And Rebecca isn't the only one whose career was blown off course by the pandemic. The coronavirus has been called the worst crisis the aviation sector has faced in its history. Here in the UK, British Airways, Virgin Atlantic and EasyJet are among those cutting their workforce by thousands, having suffered record losses running into the billions of dollars. London Heathrow has even fallen out of the top 10 busiest airports in Europe, now averaging 40,000 passengers a day compared to 220,000 before the outbreak. Down the road in Hampton, I went to speak to former Virgin crew member Emma Walls, who's chosen a different path as a postwoman. It's a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Some days I'm absolutely fine and, um, and I'm enjoying my new job and I'm having a good time. And there are times where, for example, just now when a jet will go over and I will look up and my heart will physically ache with the missing, uh, missing it. And it isn't just cabin crew finding new callings. Due to COVID-19, Will Barron was made redundant as a pilot back in March, the third time he's lost his job throughout his career. So he and another pilot decided to finally make the move from flying into funeral care. I always felt that, that the skills of a funeral director in terms of the arrangements, the compassion, the customer service and the event management, I felt all the skills to, be, to fulfil that role was something that I already possessed. And he's hoping that being a pilot will benefit his new business. People tend to listen to the pilot's point of view. There is that, that, that trust and that respect. And that's something that we hope, that we're hoping for, um, that people will see in us also as funeral directors, because that's what we need. The UK government has suggested that aviation staff who've lost their jobs transfer their skills to brand new careers. And it's called for cabin crew in particular to retrain as carers and nurses. And with the substantial decline to travel likely to linger for years, airline staff will indeed have to look to new horizons.